Hello everyone. You might remember a few months ago I made a little Star Wars space battle animation at the end of which I promised I would do a tutorial to show you how I did it. Um, and then a global pandemic happened, but we're back on track. I've got a microphone, I've got some whiskey, and there has never been a better time to learn something new in Blender. So we're going to jump into a time lapse now that uh, I recorded a while back, and I'm just going to talk you through all the steps I went through to create this shot, and hopefully you can follow along too. So to begin with, like any good Blender tutorial, I am deleting the default cube, and then I'm just going to bring in my uh, X-Wing model, which I made previously. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I'm adding a path, which is a, a type of curve, which allows you literally to create a path that an object will follow. Um, so this is by far the trickiest part of this entire process. So it took me a few attempts. You'll see me delete it and start again. So I'm basically just extruding points out um, like you would vertices on a mesh to create the path that um, the X-Wing is going to follow in 3D space. Uh, starting from the origin point of the X-Wing. Um, and it's important to give this a bit of kind of Z depth as well as X and Y space. Um, so now I'm using the follow path constraint to attach the X-Wing to the path rather than parenting it. Um, and that's because you get this little offset slider which you can animate and apply curves to um, like you would any other animation. It gives us a bit more control. I'm going to bump the uh, path resolution up to the maximum so we get the smoothest curve possible. And then I'm going to start adding keyframes for the, the y-axis orientation of the X-Wing um, so that it's kind of banking as it follows the path. And now I'm just adding a little bit of animation with the uh, the rig there so the, uh, the S-foils open up. So you can see we've got it following our path nicely and, and that's going to work for me as roughly what the path that this X-Wing is going to follow. So I duplicate the path and um, this is going to be the path that the TIE Fighter follows. Um, so I'm just going to adjust the points on that. It's going to start slightly ahead of the X-Wing because I want the X-Wing to be chasing it. Um, and then I bring in my TIE Fighter model. Um, and again, we're going to use this follow path constraint to attach it to that curve. Yeah, if we lock the camera view onto the X-Wing, we can see they're, they're basically chasing each other now, which is exactly what we're looking for can add a little bit of variation in so they're not directly behind each other. Uh, and here I'm moving the path off to the side so that uh, that's the point where the I want the TIE Fighter to be shot down and it's kind of spiral away. And again, adding these Y-axis orientation uh, keyframes so that it banks to follow the curves. Then I'm adding another path and this is the path that the camera is going to follow. So again, we're going to create a camera set it up, align it, and attach it to the curve with the follow path constraint. Then I'm going to add an empty, which is going to be what the camera is locked to. So we're using a track to constraint to control the orientation there, because if you've got the camera attached to a curve, um, the camera's orientation is going to be affected by the direction the curve's going in. We don't necessarily want that. Um, and again, animating that offset value to move it along the curve takes a bit of effort to uh, line it up properly so that um, we've got the right thing in view at the right time. Then I'm just animating the position of that empty to control what the camera's pointing at. You can see me tweaking that uh, position of that empty quite a lot just to fine tune where the camera's pointing. It could be a bit of a finicky thing to do. So now I'm uh, pretty happy with the movement. Um, I'm gonna add a sun lamp since we're in space, we don't really have an atmosphere. So our, our main light source is going to be this one very harsh sun lamp. So I'm going to turn the strength up and the size right down. So we get these nice sharp shadows. Um, and then what I want to do is just add a little bit of fill. Now that's difficult because we want a black background. So I'm going to use a little trick here um, using the is camera ray light path to mix between an HDR texture, which is what's going to be actually used to light the scene and a background texture, which is what we're going to see. Um, so I'm using a noise texture here with a color ramp attached, and you can use that really quickly and simply to create stars. Um, and I'm gonna bring the value of that white point up quite high above one so that it always sticks out quite nicely. Now I'm previewing it in the EV and you can see it looks pretty good. So that's pretty much our environment done. It's, it's really simple. So here what I'm doing is I'm adding a particle system, which is what's going to be exploding our TIE Fighter. Um, so you set the start and end frames accordingly, give it a bunch of velocity, have it emitting from the faces, 
uh, and then we're going to add an explode modifier and you can see how it, it breaks apart um, the mesh based on these particles. It's really kind of simple, dirt cheap way of getting this kind of fracture effect. And I'm going to play around with the settings quite a bit. Um, and then what I end up doing is going in here and breaking these faces up quite a bit more just so we get a little more fragmentation happening. You can adjust the number of particles and their, their seed and uh, their velocities and rotation and all this kind of thing until you get the kind of effect you're looking for. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to start working on the actual volumetric explosion element. So to do this, I'm going to add a vertex group to our TIE fighter, which is going to act as the kind of emission source uh, right from the central kind of body part for these particles. So I'm going to add another particle system, have them appearing kind of instantaneously on one frame, lots of velocity, lots of kind of random movement. And then what we're going to do is add a basically a big cube, which is going to get subdivided and be the domain for this explosion. So if you go into the physics tab um, and add the smoke domain element to that, and then we go to the TIE fighter and add a uh, smoke inflow element. And then already, if we start scrolling through the timeline, we can see we've got this explosion happening, but it's really, really low res. So we're going to up the subdivisions and uh, bake it and then tweak some settings and then bake it again so that we can kind of see what we're getting and baking you will be sick of by the end of this process so i'm just repositioning the domain a little bit here um, so we capture more of the explosion because that that explosion can only happen within the bounds of that cube that we've set up eventually i'm going to do it in quite high resolution um, and then we're going to add a principled volume shader to our smoke domain um, and that pretty much already comes set up how you'll need it to render this um, i'm going to increase the intensity of the black body radiation what i ended up doing is just adding in the temperature value for the emission strength um, just to give a slightly brighter explosion you can see we're still not really at a high enough resolution here um, so i do end up going back and baking this at a higher subdivision rate but um, that takes a very long time so now what I'm doing is I am creating the laser bolts that are going to shoot out of the X-Wing and uh, hit the TIE Fighter. And these are literally just kind of truncated cylinders with an emission shader on them. And what I'm doing is I'm positioning them at one frame at their origin point, adding a keyframe, and then moving them over to their impact point and uh, adding another keyframe there. And that's literally all there is to it. Um, the biggest part is you can actually keyframe whether an object can be rendered or not so that's what i'm doing here so I, I have it not rendering um the frame before it appears and then i keyframe it to become renderable at the point that it's meant to be emitted and then again the the opposite of that when it impacts i i keyframe it on and then off um and that's kind of a quick and dirty way of doing these laser effects you, you could do them with a particle system if you wanted but i find you get a little bit more control uh this way so yeah, just adding multiple instances of this kind of laser element at all the points I want impacts to appear. And of course, the last one lining up with when we've got our explosion happening. So pretty much the last thing I end up doing is I add some spark elements um, just to kind of complement the explosion and to kind of indicate when it's been hit but not really exploded yet. So yeah, I wanted those to leave a sort of trail behind. So what I do is I, I add a just a simple icosphere give it an emission shader put that in a different collection and hide that collection and then we're using that as um the object instance for these particles um and they, that works quite nicely i have some added for that initial kind of laser impact and then i have some during the explosion and then i also added some more as a trail that the debris leaves so you can see here i'm, I'm making kind of some final tweaks to uh, those particle systems and we've got these nice trails coming off. And then we're pretty much ready to render it. I ended up rendering this in cycles rather than EV, which is what the, the last one was done in, just because with the sampled motion blur add-on I was using, it, it basically renders every frame 16 or 30 times or whatever you set it to, and then combines them to create motion blur. It was taking about as long as it would have taken in cycles anyway. So, I ended up just using cycles at a relatively low sample count, but with the speed the shot's going at and some denoising and grain added in post, you can't really tell. 
So hopefully you found that useful. Now I've got this uh, microphone and everything set up, I'm hoping to do some more kind of longer form tutorials going through everything step by step as I go in the future and maybe some live streams or stuff like that even. Um, if you enjoyed this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, you can get access to the uh, project files from this and the uh, models for the, uh, the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter and some other stuff on there as well. Uh, and a huge thanks to everyone on Patreon who supported me so far. They've enabled all of this to happen really so thank you so much um i hope you're all staying safe staying home and uh i'll see you in the next video